Rich Real Friends and Family. We are here again. Ooh, I'm getting a little glare on my sunglasses. We are here again in the kitchen to do a requested recipe! Yay! Yay, Heidi! Okay, so Heidi has asked for um, a sandwich, a homemade sandwich bread, which she will be able to hide some whole wheat in for her kids. So, good mommy! This is the world's simplest bread recipe. Um, so what you do is you throw all of this in a bucket. You use your hand, use your hand, and you smush it all around. Throw it in the refrigerator. This is like the perfect container for it. It has a lidded top, but it is not, you don't have to make it airtight. The recipe says don't make it airtight. You don't need to monitor the doubling or tripling like you do in a, a traditional recipe. There's no kneading. You're just going to reach in and grab some of this stuff and kind of mush it into a, a, a loaf pan and then bake it. It's really, really simple. So, once again, I have tried to be organized. You will need yeast. I buy it in bulk and I have, um, and on the top of the container, I've written down um, two and a quarter teaspoons is one package of yeast. I wrote that on there because I never remember. But inside of it, I happen to have this very nifty little spoon, which I'm pretty sure my Aunt Faye gave me, because Aunt Faye's awesome, which is a two and a quarter teaspoon yeast spoon for people who buy yeast in bulk. Then you're going to need kosher salt. Kosher salt. This is different than regular salt. This is not table salt. You need kosher salt. You need your bucket. You need white flour, just regular white flour, not bread flour. And you need three cups, three cups of warm water. You don't want your water to be over 120 degrees. That will kill your yeast. So we are going to put three cups of water into the bucket. Then we're going to add the yeast. One, and then we have two scoopy doops. Stick the scoop back in, put the top back on. One and a half tablespoons of kosher salt. There's one and a half. So we're just gonna we're just gonna kind of fill it up by a half because I can I I've done this so many times I can eyeball it. Alright. Don't worry about getting any of this to dissolve. Now we're going to add six and a half cups of white flour. If you want to add the whole wheat, you would add five and a half cups of white flour and then one cup of whole wheat flour. Now all you do is take this hand, well, it says to mix with a wooden spoon, but I'm just going to take my hand because that's easier. And uh, smoodle it. <coughs> You're just wanting to get all of the flour wet. You're not trying to knead it. You're not trying to totally incorporate it. It isn't necessary. You're finished when everything is uniformly moist. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes. When everything is uniformly moist without dry patches. This step is done in a matter of minutes and will yield a very loose dough which you couldn't really need if you wanted to. It's very sticky. It's very, very sticky dough. This is going to feel and look like it's completely wrong. incredibly sticky 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 dough so we're going to place a lid on top but I'm not going to press it all the way um, down so the recipe does say so for the first time that you try this method it's best to refrigerate the, ref the dough for at least three hours or overnight before trying to shape a loaf and since I have a bunch of hours to wait 
I'm going to throw it in the refrigerator. So anyway, there you go. The beginning of bread. Bread. And the fridge. You know what a refrigerator looks like. Bye. I'm back. I'm a little windblown, but I'm back. Um, Belfair State Park was beautiful, so we shall have to go there with the trailer. I make a video, of course. Take me dog. All right, so I've not looked, but I'm pretty sure that the bread is ready. Uh, I put it together six and a half hours ago. So let's go get it. So this is what it looks like. It's very flat on top. It's very flat, and it has risen to about the four quart measure. This, like I said, is a very strange recipe. Um, there's absolutely no kneading involved. What you do next is have the camera fall over because that's oh so very much fun. Let's stick you back on there. This is really not the best. This is not the best thing to use as a tripod. This is just the thing that you stick your, that you would stick your phone on in the car. For some reason, I insist on using it as a tripod when I actually have a real tripod. I don't know. I just find it easier. Anyway, we're gonna take our flattened dough. What you do is grab a handful of flour. Handful of flour. And you sprinkle that on top. Maybe if I just put you down a little bit, not all the way. What well, you're trying to, because this dough is so incredibly sticky, you're just trying to give yourself sort of a, a handle, a way to handle the, take your rings off, a way to handle the dough. For my pan, I'm going to use about half that dough because I have a really large um, bread pan. This is a Wilton and it is nine and a quarter by five and a quarter by two and a three quarter inches. Um, I, I don't know, it looked loaf pan to me, but uh, I find that things that, ask, that call for loaf pan really want something smaller. Anyway, throw a little uh, Pam in that, or I'm using the Kirkland cooking spray. Any cooking spray will do. You're going to get a knife. A serrated knife is best, but that's not what I have right in front of me. So we're just going to use a good old kitchen knife. And I'm going to cut down the middle of this dough just so that I can pull out half the dough. Like I said, it's very sticky, so you're going to try and, and smoosh, the, smoosh the powdery flour around so that you can actually lift up the piece of dough that you want. Oh, and I've left the refrigerator door slightly open and it's yelling at me. All right. Very sticky, very sticky. Hang on. Okay, refrigerator door closed. So what I'm trying to do is grab some of that loose flour and you're going to need more flour on my hands. And you're going to uh, pull it around itself and then smush it. So I'm trying to, I'm not kneading it. All I'm trying to do is to make a, like a skin on the outside. So you do that just a couple times. That's, that's it, not very many times. Sorry, I'm trying to get, just trying to get a little extra flour here so that it stops sticking to me. Um, and then, because I'm making a loaf pan, if I were making a boule, I would just stick this on a on a pizza peel with uh, some cornmeal on it. But since I'm making sandwich bread, I'm trying to shape it into the form of a of the loaf pan. So as you can see, it now looks kind of kind of like an oval, not an oval, a rectangle. I'm trying to make it look like a rectangle. I'm going to plop it in my pan with the seam side down and squish it with my fingers. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. I am squishing with my fingers just to get it to conform to the shape of the pan a little bit. 
The dough is cold and kind of weird. Anyway, that's what it looks like in the pan. Now we're just going to let it sit. What's that loud sound? Oh, oh, it's the refrigerator. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so it's been an hour and 40 minutes. I've preheated the oven to 450 degrees. The bread has risen almost to the edge of the top the top edge of the pan, which I think is going to be just fine. So you're going to get, uh, besides this bread pan, you're going to get another pan. And I'm using sort of a small brownie pan, um, which I have placed half full of hot water. And you're going to put that on the rack underneath the rack that you put the bread on. So what I'm going to do now is just cut a few lines into the bread loaf to allow it to expand so it doesn't, the top doesn't flop. Um, when it rises, the top doesn't pop off. Okay, I'm going to turn you down so you can see me doing it. A nice sharp knife. And you're just going to make some slits in the top without trying to puncture it too much because you don't want to deflate the bread. All right, into the oven we go. This is what it looks like in the oven. There's the water pan and the bread pan right above it. It's been 35 minutes and the bread is done. I'm gonna lift it out of the oven now. It is a beautiful brown. So what I do is I take the incredibly hot pan, dump it out onto a tea towel, and then I'm going to get a rack and let it cool on the rack. Hot, 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 hot. Hot. Very hot. Um, you have to let it cool for at least 20 minutes before eating it. Otherwise, it will burn your little fingers and you will ruin the crumb of the bread. The bread needs, just like other baked goods, the, bread, the crumb needs to set in the bread. So we're gonna let it cool for 20 minutes and then I'll come back and slather a warm piece with the butter. Cause we're back. We have warm bread and a serrated knife to cut it and some butter. Let me show you what the crumb looks like. Perfect white bread. Nice soft butter. Big bang theory on in the back in the background. A, a lovely repeat. And a bite. Mm. Oh my god, that has such good chew. That has a a really good texture. Um, it's light and chewy. It's definitely white bread. I think even if you were to hide the cup of wheat flour that Heidi wants to hide, the kids would still think it's pretty delicious. I don't think they'd be able to tell. Um, I have to have another bite of that. Oh, I got to live on bread alone.